In this video, we're going to take apart LSTM. We're going to get into the guts of it and explain how it works so that we don't forget too much, but we could forget a little bit in a dynamic way. Mm -hmm. Here's our architecture that you introduced previously. And the object now is to take apart that inner workings of the state of cellular being, if you like, that has a hidden part, H of T and C of T. We see the inputs, we see the outputs, and the new high-level design. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to do this? And this is not a trivial thing, and when you first see it, it looks like a plate of spaghetti. There's lots of connections and lots of things to worry about, but we'll take it apart piece by piece. All right, take it away. Okay, so we're just going to walk you through the different components. So you'll see that through the, throughout these slides, there's going to be parts of the unit diagram that are masked. So we're just going to go through each step and then eventually uh, sort of uh, unveil the whole LSTM unit. Um, so the first thing we want to talk about, which we said is the main thing that sets LSTMs apart from RNNs, is the cell state. So you'll, uh, on this, uh, in the LSTM state, you have this essential, something, this like rail looking, a conveyor belt looking situation where you have the cell state from T minus uh, one going directly out of the state, out, out of the cell to C at time T. And then you'll see that as we uncover the, the rest of the LSTM, you'll see there's multiple connections that affect the cell state, uh, um, including things from the input, the hidden state, as well as the cell state from the previous. So on, in, a, in a very uh, vanilla mode, this is, works like a rail that uh, whatever C uh, is fed into the unit, that you get it at, at the end if there's no, nothing else here. So that's one mode of the cell uh, state updates. So basically, we're going to look at where we see that time sign and plus sign there and take it apart and see yeah. what we have to feed in mm -hmm. to update the new cell state. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go further. So uh, we get to the, the first thing we want to look at in addition to the cell state is the input. In the LSTM, uh, it's actually an input gate. So you have this, uh, this mechanism that modulates how much that input is Im impacting the cell state. So you'll notice that we have a, uh, the activation function of a sigmoid, which, reminder, uh, um, puts everything, puts all the inputs between 0 and 1, hence the whole modulation mechanism. So imagine if the, if, uh, the, output, of it is, if the output of the sigmoid is 0, then you're not getting any information from the uh, combination of x of t and h of t minus 1. And if it's 1, we're updating the entire thing. So uh, that's our input gate. And then in terms of the calculations, you'll see that we have a sigmoid function applied to this uh, linear combination of h t minus 1 and x of t, which again are our inputs and hidden states. And then we also have that b, which is a bias. And you'll notice that the superscripts are all, all in terms of i, because these are parameters that are, uh, uh, that are uh, specific to our input gate. And as we go through the different uh, gates, uh, you'll see that the superscripts change. So for now, input gate, uh, in a hidden state, input uh, x, and then modulation on top of it to essentially uh, decide how much of the new input we're going to allow uh, to impact the cell state at the end of the day. So in terms of that activation equation, we see it's the classic form, right? It just has two uh, weights, a U and a W, uh, multiplying by the states, and it has that same form that we saw in previous mm -hmm. in CNN and our basic yep. fully connected network, and we'll see that throughout the discussion of the LSTM inner workings. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other gate we have is called the forget gate. We denote it with an F for forget. Uh, the inputs are the same. You still have your uh, X of T and H from the previous step going in. Uh, mathematically, it's the same as the input, but you'll see that the, 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 the parameters of the forget gate and the input gate are decoupled. So that's why uh, here we have U of F, W of F, and a bias for F. So again, the sigmoid uh, controls 
uh, the, the output of f of t, which essentially means we, want, we have control over how much information we're forgetting from previous step. If it's zero, we're forgetting uh, none of it, and if it's one, forgetting all of it. So this is modulating h, basically, and the input. And uh, what we can see, the modulation is the time sign. So you right away can see on the rail, we've looked at the time sign with the forgetting part. So we're going to multiply f of t mm -hmm. times ct minus 1. Exactly. And then do stuff. Now let's see what else we have to do. Um, another gate we have is the output gate, which uh, this one again would be similar. We had this in RNNs too. Essentially the output of the whole uh, cell modulated with the sigmoid mechanism and then we have the input of t and h of t minus one and you'll see that this one this particular one is not connected to the cell rail because that's just the output that's sort of dependent of the uh, sorry uh, independent of the cell state and the hidden state and again the superscripts are separate because uh, the the output gate is also modulated and controlled uh, independently from the other two gates that we discussed so far well in a sense that last uh, the equation for the output gate is very similar for the simple RNN uh, absolutely, right absolutely yes so that's that's actually quite fascinating that's the final output and remember that what's carried through in the sequence information is the H and the C. So that's the big deal. The output is still in the same form as mm -hmm. what we yeah. did before in the simple case. Yes. All right, let's go further. Okay. This is the hard part. So, so far we talked about the input gate, the forget gate, the output gate. We established all of those, so this part here is, is unveiled, and you can see how, again, the forget gate and the input gate are modulating the final C, uh, the, the cell state rail. Um, now, the, the, the most important question at this point, and the whole point of all, doing all of this really, is to come up with that, uh, with that actual cell state value. So what happens in the LSTM is, uh, is that each state, uh, as each, at, at each step, um, you have this cell candidate, which is a product of, uh, uh, of uh, a combination of the input X and the hidden state T. But this time, uh, I'm sorry, uh, and then it goes through the input gate as well. So essentially what, what's happening here is um, it, we're, 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 we, we're coming up with the potential candidate for the cell state to update itself. And, it, um, and then we're going to look more closely at actually how this is done. Okay, so let's see what happens next. And here's our candidate. And we notice that this time it's not a modulation, it's, it's a real output, so we have tanH, exactly. not sigmoid. Exactly. Again, reminder, tanH outputs are between negative 1 and positive 1. And we'll also see this, this same uh, activation at the hidden layer later on. And also we saw that for simple RNNs. And essentially, the intuition behind this is, as you said, we don't want to do any modulations. We want to actively be able to like, increase and decrease the value of the cell memory to, to kind of have control over uh, the, the candidate C or the up new updated value of C. So that's why, again, the inputs and hidden layer go in, uh, simple, but then you apply the tan H on top of it, and that gives you the C tilde, which is the, the, the common uh, notation for the cell candidate. So we know that that C tilde sits below the rail, so somehow everything has to get now mapped to the rail mm -hmm. to generate CT yep. with all the other discussion we've had previously. Mm -hmm. So let's see what it looks like. Okay, so we saw this earlier, now we're looking at it again, we're putting everything together. So the forget gate uh, is the same. You'll see that the forget is, gate is being uh, multiplied by the, the, the previous cell state. Um, then the, uh, over here we have the cell candidate, which is uh, multiplied by the, uh, uh, the input gate, which essentially makes sure that you know, your, uh, your, your, uh, your input has a say in uh, what the new cell state value is going to be. And then the, the product of the two, of C tilde and, and your input gate, are going to add up, be added up to the, to the cell state again in order to update the, the C value. Okay, let's look at this further with the math. And here it is, summed mm -hmm. up, what you just said, right? Yeah. So 
Again, to recap, I, F, and O, input, forget, and output are already given. We established them with the, with the mathematical expressions. The C tilde is the tannage activation applied on this uh, signal over here. And in order to get to that final C, what we want to do is multiply how much we're forgetting. So you'll see that it's F of T times the cell state from the previous step. So we're defining how much of the previous cell, value, cell state value we want to forget. And we want to add that up to how much of the current cell state candidate we want to remember or we want to keep. Hence the I of T multiplied by C tilde T. And then you add them up because of this little sum notation here. And then that will give you the output of C of T. And that's basically our complete structure. And there it is. Mm -hmm. And one thing I want to say, Delaram, is that when we were working on this together, we didn't quite see the clear signal flow graphs with the sums and, and the arrows. They were kind of all like flow lines. But in fact, this is the most complete description in terms of a flow graph and summation. Mm -hmm. And I think you did a great job Thank in you. putting this that. together. Thank you.